Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and welcome to this YouTube video of showing different ideas for the holidays. In this video, I'm going to show you lots of fun ideas for decorating little small cookies, cakes and confections. So let's get started. This first segment, I'm going to show you how to make these adorable little Christmas plum puddings. Growing up in England, we traditionally have on Christmas Day a Christmas pudding, which is a bit like a steamed fruit cake. And then usually it's made in a dome shape in a pudding basin. It then is served with either like a heavy um, custard, a brandy butter, or a hard sauce like a brandy sauce. So I'm going to show you how to make this uh, little Christmas pudding. So first of all, we're going to need to make um, a couple of things and have them dry. So I'm going to use my small holly leaf cutter. And uh, this small holly leaf cutter is a little, so one of my products. So if you just do a search on the shopping cart and just put in, uh, go to metal cutters or just put in holly leaf and you'll find this little mini holly leaf cutter. And this makes adorable little holly leaves. Now I'm going to roll out some uh, green gum paste. Um, I'm using here the Renshaw gum paste. This is straight from the pack. But uh, if you were using uh, white gum paste, just color it green, like a moss green color, like a Wilton moss green will give you a perfect green color. And uh, what I'm going to do here is going to take my little holly leaf cutter. So I've rolled out my paste. It's been rolled out number four thickness on the pasta machine, or just roll it out fairly thin. And you're going to then just take, and I'm going to use my little companion tool. So my companion tool um, has this little ball tool end. I'm just going to pop the little leaves out like this. So you just do, obviously, however many you think you're going to need. Normally I would put one, two, or three leaves onto each of the little puddings. Now, once you've rolled your green paste out, uh, we're going to transfer those onto my pad. Now, this is my little mini pad, and the little mini pad has got two sides, both this bright green side here and then the black side, which is a softer side. And it comes with uh, the companion tool, so it's sold as a little mini pad with a companion tool. We also sell the companion tool separately. And of course, if you have a larger flower pad, you can just use a larger one as well. But this is great for small projects. So I'm going to just use my uh, the thin end, the uh, sort of veining tool end, like the little needle tool end of the companion tool, and just draw down the middle of the leaves to give a small vein on there. And you're just going to pop those to one side. Okay, So these leaves would need to dry for a, probably about an hour, and if you have a food dehydrator, just pop them in there for about 15 minutes, they would be totally dry. I'm also going to prep some uh, softened fondant. So I'm going to take some white fondant, so what you do here is you would take just a little bit of white fondant and I put it into a little container. I put it into a small container here. And uh, what I've done is I used a water spray bottle and I just used the water spray bottle here. I sprayed a little bit of water into the fondant. I've already got this pretty much the consistency I want. And you just start stirring. Now, of course, initially when you first start, this is going to be quite thick. And you just keep adding water to this until you get a sort of pourable consistency. Now, this technique I'm showing you, I have also used very successfully to do drip cakes. You know, drip cakes traditionally we do with chocolate, but if you didn't want to mess around with chocolate, you can actually do this with fondant in the color of choice. But there's no sort of recipe here. You just add enough of the water to the royal icing. So you can see it's almost a little bit like when we think of flooding cookies, that sort of like flooding consistency. Now, Christmas pudding sometimes is served with a custard, so you could actually use, um, put a little bit of yellow food color in here if you wanted to use like a creme anglaise or custard. Um, I'm going to do this in white. I've also added just a little tiny uh, drop of white gel color or a little bit of white powder color just to make this opaque because royal fondant is translucent, and when you're actually dripping this onto, say, for example, the Christmas pudding, which is like a sort of chocolate color, or if you're doing this on a drip cake, let's say you have a chocolate um, fondant cake you want to do a drip on and you're going to do the drip in pale pink. If you add a little bit of white gel color, it will actually will make the uh, drip in um, ice in fondant uh, opaque. Okay, it means it's not translucent anymore. So it will mask out the background color. So even if you did this white on top of navy, it's going to mask it out. Now I put this into a small piping bag. All right, you could also put it into a plastic bag um, as well, a plastic piping bag. I'm just going to seal this up. Now you could also use royal icing for this, but I like the softened fondant because it's just easier and plus what's left will keep, and this keeps actually several years. Just keep it in an airtight container. Now I'm going to take a little commercial um, chocolate. Uh, this is a little Frere Rocher chocolate that everybody loves. You can of course also do this with homemade uh, truffles as well. 
but because of the little nuts on the outside of this, it has almost the texture of a fruitcake or a plum pudding. I'm going to take some chocolate fondant. Now this can just be straight fondant or it can be modified with a little bit of tylose. If you want it to set up a little quicker, just add a little tylose to this and you can follow my tutorials on modifying fondant. And I'm gonna use a round cutter. I'm just using, this is about a one and a quarter inch cutter using a scalloped edge. So what it's gonna represent is almost gonna represent like a little uh, tray for this to sit onto, okay? I'm going to use, so you can put a little bit of piping gel onto this or you can also put a little bit of, if you have the same, um, same technique with chocolate fondant, this is just some chocolate fondant I've added water to and I have in a bag but you can also use a little piping gel here. You could also use melted chocolate so also. So if you have melted chocolate, just use that. I'm just gonna put just a little bit of melted chocolate or the softened chocolate fondant onto the top of like the little plate. And then I'm gonna take my truffle and my truffle is gonna just sit onto here like so. I'm just gonna squash this down. So this will act like almost like a little plate, all right? So this gives it stability. Now taking then your piping bag so with your piping bag here, you're going to cut the end off, not too, not too small, okay? And then what I want to do here is I'm going to actually just like drip this, just like almost like how you do a drip cake. You see the softened fondant is just going to drizzle down here to represent the custard or the cream onto the top here, like so. You see how you're going to create this nice what I like about this, it has a nice, it stays sort of has a nice look to it, all right? And so you're just gonna do that. And of course you could do this if you're doing say 12 truffles. These are really nice to serve um, for a Christmas dinner or luncheon with a coffee um, after dinner. And of course, so you can make these, you could use them as a name place marker. There's lots of fun things you can do. I'm just gonna pop that to, uh, to one side for a second. All right, so you just want the icing just to set up just a little bit, all right? So if you're doing 12 of these, you obviously will go through and do all 12 of those. Now you can keep the little cases they come in because once this is actually made, you can pop it back into the case if you wish to. So you can actually pop that back into the case there. You should just let that set up a little bit before you handle it, okay? If you should accidentally squash it, you can just use your companion tool, but as I said, you can let them dry before you put them back in the case. But if you're going to box them, that's a nice way to obviously do that, okay? But you don't have to, if you were serving these in your own home, you could just obviously just leave them on the little dish. So we've got the holly um, ready, we've got the holly leaves ready. Um, we're also gonna use some little red non-pareils, okay? So non-pareils are these little tiny, tiny uh, little pearls here, little tiny beads called non-pareils, come in many colors and uh, you can buy them in individual colors and also you can buy them in mixed colors. Um, I'm gonna use the red ones, okay? I'm going to use a little, um, this is a little Drage uh, applicator and this uh, product that I sell. So it comes in a little uh, pack here. So you get the applicator, you get the tray and then you get the wax here. So this is a Drage B pickup stick, okay? Um, product number NL135. And uh, this product uh, is wonderful for picking up little tiny non-pareils. And because um, these are so tiny, you can't really use tweezers. Now, when, you, when this comes, you get obviously the little trays. You just put your dragees, your pearls, your non-pareils into there. And you can use this also for uh, larger size pearls as well. We're going to use the wax. Now the wax is actually orthodontic wax. So this would be used for like braces. So if you ever use it all up and you need more, you can just buy this uh, in obviously uh, the, the drugstore, just buy it up where they have uh, the wax, orthodontic wax. So you open the plastic, you take the little product and you're then going to then just gonna plug that. So you're actually just gonna plug the inside with the wax. Just cover this over and keep this in the little plastic bag. It comes in so then this will stop the wax drying out. What this means is it'll enable us to be able to pick this up. Now, once this is dried a little bit, we're going to take some, I'm just gonna use some tweezers here, and I'm gonna use, just use some tweezers, and I'm gonna attach the holly to the top here. And you can just put on here two or three pieces of holly. But I said, you want the, you want the um, icing just to dry just a little bit, all right? So you see how the holly will sit onto the top here, like so. And then we're gonna take a little uh, piping gel. Now this is a piping gel 
This is a piping gel in a needle tip applicator. So this is a needle tip glue applicator. Again, a product that I have. And I'm just going to put a little bit of piping gel just right in that middle there. So what this will do, this will just ensure that the, uh, I'm just going to move that holly leaf up a little bit. And I'm going to take now my little, you see, I'm just going to pop these up here like this. And it's going to lift these up so that you see how they just actually sit on the end of the wax. Now, of course, an alternative to this would be to take your, to use uh, royal icing. So you could actually pipe little dots of royal icing here. Just going to pop those onto the top here like so. So you're just going to put these in. And of course, if your white icing around the edge here is still soft, you can put your, these can actually sit into the uh, icing as well, into the white icing. You're just going to pop those on like so. And then I've got here, this is a little uh, small uh, wooden disc from a tree. You can buy these in craft stores or online. It's just a nice sort of natural presentation. And again, you could use a marker and you could actually put somebody's name on here, family member name or friend's name. And then you could set this as a name place marker. And then when coffee at the end of dinner, you obviously have your little uh, truffle to eat. Of course, these could totally be made with uh, handcrafted truffles. I'm just showing you using commercial um, chocolates and uh, sort of just a fun way to take something and make it quite unique and sort of uh, become your own. So that's how we make the little tiny Christmas plum pudding. So adorable and as I said, can be done with uh, obviously yellow and to make custard um, instead of obviously cream. But the softened fondant, as I said, works very, very well for an application there for that. Now, next thing I'm going to show you are my little mini gingerbread men. Now, these little mini gingerbread men, uh, these are uh, made with a cutter. And these are really fun to use, and you can do a bite me one. So obviously this is like a gingerbread man that somebody's taken a bite out of. But really fun to use on petty fours, on mini cupcakes, on gingerbread houses, for windows. You can actually even use this as a little, uh, you know, sort of cutter to cut out the windows. And this is my little mini small gingerbread man cutter. So this is a little mini gingerbread man cutter I had. Uh, made several years ago. You can also pose the arm. So you see like this one here, I've just posed his little arm. And uh, so you can pose this in different ways. Now when we make the gingerbread man, I'm going to use gum paste um, because I want this to dry quite hard and quickly. And what I've actually done there is I've just colored this with some brown and orange. So I've made almost like a gingerbread dough color. So this is gum paste, it's Renshaw gum paste. And I want through the pasta machine on number two, or if you're rolling it out freehand, just not too thin, okay? And I'm going to take my little gingerbread man. I'm going to just take, just rub over with your thumb. And again, you can pop this out with your little companion tool. And you're going to take your gingerbread man. And what you want to do here is as you cut them out, you want to pop them into, into your plastic flap, okay? So I'm just going to put these into my plastic flap or under a plastic uh, bag or into a container just so that the air doesn't dry them because you want to actually attach the uh, little dragées while they're soft. I'm going to put my excess paste back into the bag. And uh, so a little of that goes a long way. And of course, you can make these in advance and store these, and they work really, really well. Now, when we do the little gingerbread man, first of all, I'm going to show you just the classic little gingerbread man here. So here, I'm going to take this. I'm going to put this onto my black side of my pad. Okay, now I'm going to use my needle tip applicator. If you don't have one of these, all right, what you would do is you would squeeze just a little bit of piping gel onto your table like this. And then using your, your needle tool, all right, the, the, the companion tool, you just would use that to make little dot, 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 and then three little dots down there, okay? Using the needle tip applicator, because this is really, really tiny, so this is needle tip glue applicator here, I'm going to just put a little tiny, so I've got one dot there, one dot there, and I'm just going to just touch the, just one, two, and three. So you're just going to put just a little tiny dot of, of, of uh, piping gel there, okay? I'm going to use my, now you can do uh, white, you can do black, you can do whatever color you want to here. So you can do, so these will be like the little white eyes. But see, this is m so much easier than, for example, using uh, using uh, pipe royal icing because they're also perfectly round as well. So you're just going to take your little pieces there like that. Just make sure the buttons are level. And then what I found works really well is I take my little mini scraper. 
I just put it on top and I just press down just gently. So what that's going to do is going to embed the nonpareils into the gum paste, all right? That's why you want to have them soft. And what this is going to do is going to just stop them potentially getting knocked off later on, okay? Um, so that would be how you, and of course you can pose the, pose the hand, you could do a little Santa hat, and you can see here I've got a couple of other examples. So this one I did with little, um, obviously black nonpareils. This one here I did the little black eyes, but like currants, and I've done little red, do green and red, you know, so there's lots and lots of ways of making this festive. And when you do the little um, bite me one, what I'm actually doing here is I'm going to use the holly cutter. So this is the holly cutter I just used. And you can just literally just use the holly cutter and just sort of like bite a piece out of the gingerbread man, you see? So it looks almost like a bite mark on the, on the end there. Again, if you didn't have, if you didn't have the um, holly cutter, all right, so what you can do there, an alternative would be you could just use your uh, your tool here, the head of the gingerbread man, you could cut that, and then you could just actually use your needle tool to sort of go in to make like little bites. So you get that same sort of effect, you see? So you're gonna get like a little bite on the edge of him. So whether you use the holly cutter or you use the head of the gingerbread man, you can do that. But adorable to use in all sorts of applications. Um, so that's the small gingerbread man cutter. Um, so really fun to use, and I said there's so many things you can use those on um, in, uh, as I said, little decorations on all different types of chocolates and petty fours and confections that you would make. Next thing I'm going to show you is going to be a little miniature tree, all right? These little mini trees are actually made using my, um, my Flower Pro, uh, this is my ultimate um, sunflower and daisy uh, mold. And actually on my Flower Pro video, I talk about using this as little Christmas trees. So this is my uh, mold. A lot of you have this maybe already at home. And uh, this has got um, the uh, obviously parts on here, the components on here for making the sunflower and the Gerber daisy. And I'm using here this part, which is what I actually use when I make Gerber daisy calyxes, all right? Now for this, I'm gonna use my size guide. So size guide is part of, um, of Flower Pro. And um, the size guide I'm using here is going to be number six size. So I'm going to use my size guide number six. If you don't have a size guide and you're ordering anything, just request it. But in the Flower Pro book, so this is number six size like this. Okay, and you would make, um, so obviously several little balls of paste. And this is gum paste I'm using here, okay, because I want this to dry hard and to dry fairly quickly. So I'm using a little bit of gum paste. So I'm going to take my little um, here going to take my little piece of green paste. I'm going to take just a little tiny, tiny bit of vegetable shortening and just rub that into the mold. Remember, when you are using the mold, when you finish with them, just wash them in some little bit of, with some dish soap, that will just get rid of the shortening. So I'm going to take a number six, and I make it into basically into a carrot shape. And I'm going to use just my little scraper here to hold the paste. And I'm just going to push the paste in with my fingers. And then I'm going to finish that off with a cosmetic sponge. So this will fill up the mold to the top, okay? Now, you can either pop this out the mold, all right? So you can pop this out the mold and just leave it as is. So this could be used as a little, like on a cookie, you could do like a little ski, uh, sort of ski scene, a little snow scene, and you could add the little Christmas trees to that. Um, or you know, if you want to make them onto spaghetti, what I'm actually doing here, I have here, uh, this is thin spaghetti or like angel hair pasta. All right, so you're just gonna just take some angel hair pasta and uh, I'm going to take with the angel hair pasta here. So I showed this on my, if you watch my, uh, using my uh, antlers, the how I made the Rudolph's uh, ears and nose and things. And on the antlers, I use the regular spaghetti. So I'm gonna take, this is angel hair pasta. I'm gonna take some of my super bond, which is my very thick glue that I use. I'm gonna put a little bit of super bond onto here. And I'm going to then just push this into the, push this into here, like so. Now this means you could then stand this up easily. So then you're just gonna flex your mold each side here. So when you take your little tree, and if you've got a little bit of too much paste on the bottom there, just press that in with your um, companion tool. Just press that in to create the bottom. And there you see you have an adorable little half-relief Christmas tree, all right? 
So obviously you can, so you can use it like this. You could obviously stand this, just lay this down on some foam. Now, if you want to make a 3D tree, all right, what you ideally want to do is let that just dry for about 15 minutes. I just literally popped it in the food dehydrator for five minutes. That's enough for about 15 minutes. And then what you would then do is you would then repeat the process. So this is very much like how I make my uh, pine cones. So when I do my pine cones, when I'm doing uh, my antlers, where I make the two halves, you make one half, let it dry a little bit or dry and then you're going to make the second half. You can let this totally dry with this, okay? And then you, what you're going to do is going to just then repeat the process. So I'm just going to just going to, and see using your scraper there, what that does, that stops the paste pushing out of the edge. Just going to press it onto the top. Make sure that that stays, you can see, within the perimeter of the mold, okay? And then I'm going to take my super bond now, Superbond comes with an applicator, so you can just use a little bit of Superbond here, just going to go over the surface, or something else that's thick and sticky. So, um, piping gel could be used, corn syrup could be used, uh, but as I said, it wants to be something sort of a little thicker than like an edible glue, okay? And then this is my sort of uh, dry one, so then what you do is you're going to just then just push the dry one on top of the wet one, in a flexure mold, and then when you pop that out, here you see you have a little three-dimensional Christmas tree, okay? And this would be so adorable on top of a little petty four. Um, you could use this on top of a mini cupcake. Now, there's lots of ways to finish that off. You can, uh, for example, there's a product that you can buy on the online. It's called uh, uh, snow sugar. It's like, well, donut sugar sometimes it's called, which is basically a powdered sugar. It's a sucrose, but it doesn't dissolve. So I use that on lemon bars and things like that. So you could put this into your cupcake. You could then sprinkle a little bit of that. And that means if you're putting it in the refrigerator, you, it's not going to dissolve like regular powdered icing sugar would. You can also take uh, products like this is, for example, like a white pearlescent white, and you can use this. And you're going to take some of this white here, and then you can, once your little tree is dry, so this is a dry one here, you're just going just gonna to just gently brush over the surface of the tree with the pearlescent. And you see how it's just going to sort of give you a Christmas tree. And of course, you could do this with gold or with silver as well. So you're going to have your little uh, Christmas tree, all right? So just a fun, fun thing to use on a little small, uh, as I said, confection, like a petty four or whatever can be used. Next thing I'm going to show you is uh, about texturing to do like a snow texture. Now these are um, called, uh, as I said, this product here is called Easy Texture Mat, and uh, it's like a plastic comb and it comes in a set of two, all right? So there's two of them in the set here. Um, and uh, this works really, really well for texturing. And I use this for, uh, for example, non-Christmas time, I use this for grass texture. So it's wonderful for grass. But during the holidays, this is perfect to use as an application for uh, snowballs and for like little toperies in gingerbread houses and all sorts of other things and fur trim and snow. Generally, when I'm working with this, I'm just using straight fondant, okay? So I'm just using here rolled fondant. So when you are making, uh, for example, like little uh, snowballs, so you see how this makes these really adorable, make them in all different sizes, little snowballs here. Um, we can make these in, in any size fondant, all right? So you're just gonna take a ball of fondant, the size you think you want the snowball to be. And then what I do here is I just pop these onto my hands like this. So if you're gonna do several of them, have your little balls of paste under a cup. And then all you then do is you take the comb I'm just going to roll this. Now, this could also be used, if you do it lightly, you can use this also for marzipan petty fours. If you're doing marzipan fruits to look like oranges, you can just do it gently. But if you want to do a snowball, you put quite a bit of pressure on here, and you see how it's going to give you this beautiful snowball technique, all right? And then that could just be, what I normally do is just use crepe foam, and I just dump them into some crepe foam like this let them dry and you can use these on gingerbread houses. You could do uh, all sorts of things with these. But this can also be used, for example, when you do uh, like a baby shower cake, if you wanted to make like a teddy bear, you could use like a head. Then when you do the teddy bear's body, you can make it into like this shape. You can make the teddy bear's arm, all right? You can make the teddy bear's leg and you can fold the bottom of it like that. So you see how you make a little teddy bear's leg there. Um, so really, it can be used for many, many different types of uh, texture, all right? Now, you can also use this for 
um, example like on this um, here on the cookie on the unicorn cookie the Santa unicorn cookie all right uh, basically what it is just use some red fondant to cut with a round disc cutter to cut the hat and then I've used this little tiny ball there and then for like the fur trim you just would make a and you're just going to just roll a sausage now when you do the fur trim you can obviously make this however long you want it to be all right so like for example if you wanted it to go around so for example here I've done just a, like a little bit like an elf's hat, all right? You could do obviously this in red to like Santa's hat. I'll talk about this part in a moment. But if you wanted to do the trim there, so you just would make a sausage of white fondant, the size that you need to go around your cupcake, all right? And then when you take your, sorry, open these ones. When you take your, your little um, comb here, okay? So when you take your comb here, so what you would then do is you just would roll this through. You see, you're just going to just extend your sausage past the, the end here. So just roll your sausage like that. And you can just going to roll this through the, you see, this is going to give you the sort of the fur trim, you see, like that. And so this is sort of how you would do like a fur trim. And then you can just sort of even this up with just one of these, I'm just going to use this on there, okay? And so this could be used for a, for a trim. Now another way you can do that is on a cupcake is you could also just have a smooth, you could just do a smooth sausage of fondant. Just glue that around your cupcake, so you just would glue it around the cupcake. And then what you would then do is you just literally just use one of these and you can just texture this, all right? This is still soft, so I can just finish texturing this off, but you can just texture that part as well, so you can do this. But this is sort of basically how I do grass. So when I'm doing grass and things, I would just use that to do like a sort of a grass texture. Um, so it's a really, really nice way to, to do a grass texture. Um, and when you're doing um, like with grass, when you're doing things like uh, grass and that, a lot of times I'll mix the two Renshaw green fondants, because this is like, for example, the bright green, all right, and this is the regular green here. So a lot of times I'll mix the two together to make this more of a grass green color. But when you're doing like a, like a grass, grass, you're just going to use this over the surface of it. So you're doing like a sort of a, a grass texture. So you're just going to go over the surface of this, and it gives a really nice texture for grass. So if you're doing like a golf theme cookie or anything like that, you can do this grass effect with it. But this is also wonderful for um, gingerbread houses to use for, again, for little toperies. So if you're making like little tiny toperies here, and when you're doing really small things, you don't even have to put this on your hand, but you can just make little tiny toperies. So you see it makes a really great little topery. And of course you can also use in the little um, Drage applicator, the non pro applicator. You can put little dots of piping gel. You could do little red berries, so it looks like obviously little uh, tree. You could do little gold ones. It would look like little or silver ones. It would look like little lights in a bush. And then another thing you can do here is if you take, um, gain a piece of the green. So this is also fun to use for a cupcake also. And that is you just take a piece of green paste, make it into a basic carrot shape. Just flatten the end of it. And then what I do here is I'm going to take just regular spaghetti, okay? Just two, three inches long. Little bit of the super bond. So this is good if you want to stick these into, um, into a cupcake. Now if you're going to just use these, like for example, by the door of a gingerbread house, you can of course just use them like this, all right? But if you want to stand it into a cupcake, the spaghetti just gives a little bit of stability to it. So you're just going to just push this in like this, all right? Make that into the size you need, and you're going to take your little combs here. And you see here, what I'm doing is I'm just going to use this like a carrot shape. I'm just going to go around here, and this just makes your little Christmas tree here. And of course, you could just take this tree, and then this could just be uh, dried, all right? So you could just dry this. And then once this is dried, you see you have an edible support system. So on top of your cupcake, you can just push this into the cupcake. You could decorate this with little non pareils You could do colored icing on here. You have a great little Christmas tree, okay? So that's sort of fun to do for, um, for the holidays. 
when I did the um, when I did the little like the little elf type of Santa's hat here, and I said this could totally be in, done in red. What I did there is when I did did that, I actually just took a little piece of on the top of it. Once I'd made it, I just put a little piece of angel hair pasta in there, and I just made a little pom pom and just stuck that on the top so that the, the that's going to stop it falling off. All right. But uh, how, you, how you make that part is I just took about a number 15 size. So this is actually about 30 grams, so just over one ounce of uh, fondant. And so I'm going to use about a number 15 size piece of fondant here. And then what I do there is I take this and I make it into a cone shape to make the basic shape of the hat. You can just use a little bit of cornstarch as needed here. And I'm just going to use my rolling pin, it's going to go inside the inside of this, all right? So you're just going to make a little hollow in here. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little uh, peanut butter cup. Now normally this has got a little bit warm with the lights. Normally I take these straight from the freezer, okay? So if you have them sort of basically just straight from the freezer, so they're going to be nice and cold. So you take the paper off, make sure you do remove this acetate paper, okay? Because you don't obviously eat that. And then what you can actually do then is you see you can actually pop that into the inside of that and then you can bring your paste down. So what that is, it gives you a sort of, it's not just all fondant then. You see you have the little uh, peanut butter cup inside that and then you can just sort of bring this over. And as I said, when I did the top of that, I just cut the top off and I just made a little tiny hollow in the top there. And then you can just pop that little piece of either angel hair or regular pasta will work okay. So just a little tiny piece of that, just pop that in the top. Because as I've said on some of my other videos, what you never want to do is to use something that is non-edible, like a wire or a toothpick on something that somebody is going to consume. And then this part could be made in advance, then you could of course put some buttercream on top of your cupcake, and then you can put that on the top, and then you could finish this off. Of course you could also take like for example, a little gingerbread man here. So I just take a little gingerbread man, just put that on the top of this one. This one I just, let's see how cute that could be. And you could obviously decorate that with other different things. A couple of gingerbread men, some little dots. Could use some pearls and things on there as well. So those are some, um, as I said, uh, little uh, ideas for uh, doing some holiday decorations using just a few of my little tools and gadgets, my favorite things at the holiday time. So I hope you all have fun making these little tiny decorations to use on your cupcakes and little confections with your friends and family. Um, and uh, have a happy holiday season. And until next time, this has been Nicholas Lodge, Sweet Wishes. See you real soon.